Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 11 content. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 11 content. Now, Series 11 kicked off last week and if you missed any of the episodes on the channel that we put up last week, we had a bunch of sample teams to help you get started in the series if you're wanting to kind of find your feet a little bit. There is five sample teams that were featured from Monday to Friday Friday last week that you can use and um, they're all the kind of top tier restricted Pokemon that you would kind of be seeing in the format at the minute to help you get started so do check them out I'll link the playlist up in the top right hand corner but getting on to today's episode we do have a rental code and it is from Joe fellow youtuber Clover Bells their YouTube channel and all their socials will be linked down in the description so a big shout out to Joe who does put out a lot of really great VGC content and great teams as well and this is one of them of course I saw the Dialga team from a tweet of his last week checked out the team and it was really great Dialga definitely one of those restricted that I did want to feature on the channel um, and this team's brilliant so hopefully you enjoyed today's episode obviously here's the overview of the team there's a rental code we'll have a couple of games with the team now just to pilot it short off and uh, see how it works and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end so without further ado friends hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll get into game one okay first up today we have a Cinderace Tokol Zapdos Kyogre, Weezing and Regigigas team. Quite an interesting one for us to kick off with today, especially with that Weezing and Regigigas. We haven't really seen that combination at all in Series 10 because uh, the Dynamax ability kind of disappearing. Other options in the team, Speed Control, you're looking at things like Airstream from uh, the Zapdos, you've got Max Strike from the Regigigas, but no direct Speed Control like Tailwind or Trick Room really in the team. I think maybe, like Trick Room's really good for us, but you've got to worry about the tall call. I mean, Blastoise might be a not a bad shout, to be honest. Let's go to Algar and then Grimmsnarl in the back and lock in and see if this is going to be good. I'm thinking maybe with time running out that Blastoise, maybe if we can get uh, a Shell Smash up and then we can max the next turn and utilize something like Amoongus with redirection to kind of start us off. Uh, then get Grimmsnarl in. The problem is with Grimmsnarl is we can't really get the full benefit from our screen support. Uh, because we, we lose our prankster with Weezing being on the field, you know? Um, and you kind of looking at like... <laughs> it's really it's really tricky. We have to go. We have to go Rage Powder turn one. Um, and they just max, max strike, I think. They max strike and probably taunt. Amoongus. This is going to be very difficult. This is going to be so difficult for us to deal with. Um, nothing maxing though. Turn 1, which is interesting. Flamethrower. Okay. Are they just wanted to get rid of the Amoongus. Without maxing. I'm kind of say Oh, they got an Icy Wind. Oh, that's not good. That is not good because that gets rid of our white. A white herb although we do keep among us and we do have that redirection the next turn so we can just go for a water spout although our defense is going to be absolutely on the floor uh, we could go for a water spout we could go we could go for the um the max the max move which maybe it would be enough to get the wheezing for sure but wheezing more likely to protect we don't want that speed Reset. So it's probably better to go Max Cannonade into Reggie Gigas with Weezing more likely to protect here. Um, we have to Rage Powder. We have to Rage Powder because our defenses are on the floor without the the without the White Herb boost. And you you would imagine probably Reggie Gigas going to be that Pokemon that wants to Icy Wind to get rid of the speed boost because we're plus one now after the icy wind drop so they're probably wanting to catch us out going after wheezing i would imagine to remove it so our abilities are back in effect um but we'll see we'll soon find out uh, as we get that rage powder off no protect so we should be able to remove the, the gigas which is kind of surprising that it's not maxed yet wow actually takes it god that's nuts. That is nuts. Sludge Bomb coming out. We'll take this. Um, and another Icy Wind, yeah. The Gigas going for that Icy Wind again. 
The residual damage, I mean, the, the fact that Amoongus is able to kind of hang on again is pretty, pretty big for us. Get that residual damage. Uh, and another one going to be able to get rid of the Regigigas. So that's that's kind of alright. So we've got a target into the the Weezing now, which is good. Um, we probably want to preserve Amoongus here. And maybe bring in... I mean, we could bring in Dialga actually. Because if they Sludge Bomb again... It's not going to do anything. And uh, Dialga doesn't really care about the speed drop. Because you can just flip the dimensions and set Trick Room up if we want to. I'm so surprised that the Gigas hasn't maxed and nothing is protecting either. But they're doing a good job of kind of, okay, so we just get rid of the wheezing just like that. We've got to watch out for, so the neutralizing gas, okay. That helps our defense drops for sure. And another icy wind, so that puts Blastoise down at minus one now. So we can max guard the next turn in Trick Room, potentially, because the Gigas is gone. Now it depends on what my opponent's last two Pokemon are. But that is one strange way of playing Regigigas and Weezing. Icy Wind's a nice tech on it for sure, but it's not something you see too commonly used on it, but it has put us in a bit of an awkward spot, I guess. The Kyogre coming in doesn't worry me too much. And Cinderace, that's what worries me more than anything, because we need the Trick Room up, really. And the High Jump Kick against something like uh, I mean, we could just attack with Blastoise. Just the defenses are so poor. And we're only minus one, I guess. Okay, so I think what we'll do is max guard. Because I think at the end of the day, we could try for our trick room. It's just we're going to struggle against... Yeah, with Amoongus kind of not having that regenerator coming in either. Um... We would get redirection, so we could water spout, get rid of the, the Cinderace. Or we could just water spout now and just Trick Room. Oh, we could, yeah. G Max Cannonade and Trick Room, I think. That's what we'll do. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Because the Kyogre, is it the Kyogre? Kyogre gonna max, or is it, it looks like the Cinderace is gonna max. Now, Cinderace maxes, goes for probably Airstream or Knuckle. And I don't think either are going to be enough to take down Blastoise, right? And if we get the Cannonade into Cinderace, then we're, well, we knock it out. It's going to max strike. Okay. Slow us down again. But that's kind of fine. We've got the Trick Room. Oosh. So we're in range now for um, Blastoise to go down from a Water Spout, for sure. For sure. But we get a trick room up, which is the, the main thing. Um, we can put the Cinderace to sleep, and we can Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. Or we could Pollen Puff into Dialga, which might not be a bad idea either. But I think putting the Cinderace to sleep is probably the better option. There's no terrain on the field that we need to really worry too much about. Um, and yeah, if we... Yeah. We Thunderbolt the Kyogre, we spore the Cinderace. And if Amoongus goes down, then that's that's that. That's fine. And we've got to hope that there's no uh, safety goggles on the, the Cinderace. Because that would be a little bit annoying for us to deal with. No. So that's good. So Cinderace asleep. Get the Thunderbolt into Kyogre. This should do about 50%, 50-60. Or actually just knock it out. Critical hit. That helps us out massively. Um, I think we would have lost Amoongus there. Dialga would have hung on. Um, so I think this just quickens quickens everything up for us now. Because we can just pollen puff into Dialga. As Amoongus is kind of stuck around. And go for... Well we can flash cannon here because they're still a normal type. So we'll be able to get that kind of stab. Oh, that's why you don't run Pollen Puff with Dialga, because the telepathy 
totally comes back and bites you in the butt. Okay, well the Librero changing into a fighting type's good because then Grimmsnarl comes in and um, we can just spirit break into the Cinderace. And we got enough trick room turns and we got redirection to kind of help us out there. Didn't realize that about telepathy. Blocking Polymper. Well, there's a new one for us. It makes a lot of sense though. And of course it's got the life orb. I was a little bit unsure whether it had the life orb or not because uh, we had the, the cannonade damage, uh, the, re the residual damage kind of chipping in. I wasn't sure if it was that or the life orb. But um, with the trick room of Grimmsnarl coming in, we should be, should be all right. We can just spore again and just go spirit break and that should be that let's have got protect of course and it will protect this turn but a sucker punch ain't gonna save it from this position so let's see if we are able to pick up a win in this first one battle cancel so very good game to my opponent interesting team i like the concept of the team a lot i think the team um build in general is really interesting especially the, the gigas and the different lines of support you can see it, like the options make sense in that team um but i think we probably let off a little bit lightly from them not maxing the reggie gigas uh, early on but it, that's how it goes sometimes but very good game to my opponent nice game on and we'll jump straight into game two okay next up we have a solid sun team we got a venusaur a charizard groudon porygon 2 a Alolan marowak and umbrian so some nice options in here pretty standard sun outside of the Alolan marowak uh, that you don't generally see but another kind of addition to support the trick room option probably got lightning rod as well to support the charizard the gmax charizard against big electric sort of threats Incineroar are going to be particularly critical for us in this one. The other option is we could go with something like Landorus here and Grimmsnarl and then have like Incineroar on the back. And with the Lumberry and then screen support, Landorus is in a really good position to kind of cut through the potential Charizard of Venusaur. And Incineroar on the back. And then, whew, do we want to go Dialga in this match? Probably need Dialga like in every match possible. But it's just if that Trick Room gets set up, it's going to be difficult to kind of function with Dialga in this game. Just with the Marowak, it makes it difficult. And also the Umbrian as well makes it a little bit more obnoxious to deal with. But I think we'll go down this route because I feel like Landorus and Grimstall can probably do enough in the short term, like the early stages of the game, to kind of make it easier for Dialga to kind of clean up later. Um, the things that we need to watch out for, of course, are going to be the Umbrian with that yawn. So we have to be a bit careful with when we do Dynamax, especially if we see the Umbrian lead. Uh, it always makes that kind of decision a little bit harder for you. I feel so let's see Groudon and Venusaur so this is actually a really good lead for us to be honest because we can max airstream into the Venusaur turn one we can set up a light screen as well we can set up a reflect um, but we can reflect the next turn I don't really worry too much about the Groudon now we've got that intimidate onto it um, and you would imagine that the Venusaur will probably want to try and go for a sleep powder into Landorus or switch out but you've got to still look at the options of your opponent's team you know have they got any intimidate in the back the other option what they could potentially do is switch into like p2 here which would not be ideal um but i think we've got to pull that i think we've got to pull the trigger i think we pull the trigger straight away into the venusaur although it probably does switch out it could have cobra berry as well Ah, oh, they're maxing, they're maxing Venusaur, which is interesting. So they're probably Corberberry. They're probably max oozing uh, into Grimstone, maybe get that special attack boost, but more likely option is the G-Max Vine Lash into, um, into Landorus. Or Grimstone, I mean either, or uh, just depends which one you want to prioritize. I mean, the, the bigger threat is coming from the Landorus, so you would think that's where you would want to put like you would want to target into that slot really wouldn't you so let's see gotta worry about the ground on as well we're kind of leaving it alone this turn so it does open up opportunities where my opponent could potentially sword stance which causes a few issues so there's a light screen let's see is venus all gonna go first g max vine lash here yeah. Into Landorus, but behind the light screen, we take that pretty well. Got to deal with that residual damage though next, which is not going to be great. And there's the Corba Berry. 
Okay, well, at least we get rid of that. And even if we don't add speed at the next turn, we do have scary face that we can kind of fall back on. Um, let's see what this... Ooh, it's a crit. Thought it did a lot more damage there than it would have normally with the berry. Um, and there's the, the precipice blades. So Grim's not going to take the full force of that. But we can get the reflect up this next turn, which is going to help us. And hopefully... Uh, Lander is going to be in a, a good position to be able to just kind of clear up this this Venusaur. Probably do need the scary face, if I'm completely honest. Um, into Venus, but but it could potentially max guard here as well. So like just getting the reflect up is probably the better option overall. Because I'd hate to max guard. I'd hit them to max god, us go scary face into it, and max airstream into it, and then the Groudon just goes for precipice blades, and then it's got access to a sword stance where later on in the game we're not going to be able to kind of mitigate that because we've got uh, Intimidate out on the field and um, they've removed our Grimmsnarl, so we've no longer got that reflect. Now, we do see the Venusaur take down the Grimmsnarl here, we do get the reflect. Let's see what this. Um see what this Groudon goes for. It wouldn't surprise me if it went for a Sword Stance here. We do get rid of the Venusaur, which is nice. So we're plus two with Landorus, and that's a double crit. What's this Landorus on? What juice are you drinking, Lando? Um, the P2 is going to be really obnoxious to deal with as well, of course. But, okay, Fire Punch. We still got a Lumberry, <laughs> which comes in. Oh, no, no, no. I thought we were burnt there. Just as I said it, uh, do we want Incineroar to come in? Probably yes, because it gives us a nice way for a parting shot. It gives us a nice option for fake out as well. Um, not so much against the Umbreon, but we could double into it. Yeah, and we don't necessarily need to worry that much about the Groudon because the Groudon's minus two and we've got to reflect up. Really don't need to worry about it at all. I think, yeah, we just go... Flare Blitz, Sun Boosted, and we go Max Quake as well. Yeah, makes makes the most sense. And just try and get rid of this Umbrian. Groudon Protect in here, that's fine. Umbrian very rarely has Protect as well, so you're pretty safe most of the time kind of double tapping into to that slot. Is it going to be enough? Probably not. Probably not. But it does enough damage where we'll probably be able to pick it up the next turn. We still got Dialga in the back as well, so let's see how much this does. Come on, Incy, don't let us down. Oosh, very close, very close, very close. So an Earthquake the next turn will be able to get it, but um, and we can we can Earthquake the next turn and switch into Dialga if you want. Preserve Incineroar for later on because you've got to you've got to think we've got the telepathy, so we've got the ability to switch into Dialga next to um, to Landorus as well, which we found out uh, from the Pollen Puff play from that last game. Um, we could sword stance as well, but I don't feel like we've got the kind of the room to be able to kind of sword stance. The only problem I would say we've got is if Charizard, Charizard's in the back, that could be a little bit of an issue. But an earthquake should take down the Umbrian and uh, do a nice chunk of damage to the Groudon. And if anything's going to switch out here, it's going to be the Groudon. They want to reset those Intimidate drops like 100%. Not going to see it switch though, I don't think. Doesn't appear so. Dialga definitely doesn't want to take a Precipice Blade, but like I said before, like Groudon's got it's minus two and we've got the reflect up, so we don't need to necessarily worry about it too much. Just need to get rid of the Umbreon, which we do here, so that's kind of job done on Landorus's kind of end of things. Precipice Blade's coming out, so Landorus is gonna be able to avoid that. Precipice Blade's coming in. And Dialga taking that pretty well, to be honest. Pretty well. Residual damage can we take? Can we hang on? Oh, by two we can. So it makes it a little bit more tricky in particular if we see something like Charizard coming because we have got that speed boost. Um, and we are going to be able to rock slide. Oh, it's Marowak. Marowak. We can double tap into... Um, mm, huh. We probably want to switch into Incineroar here. And then go... I think... Ooh, we can't Earthquake, can we? we probably have to Rock Slide. The other option is... Uh, it's just... How can we deal with the Groudon? The Groudon's a bit obnoxious to deal with. Can Incineroar deal with the Groudon by itself? Precipice Blades? I don't think so. We can probably double tap into the Marowak here. Like, Earthquake and... 
Yeah, we earth. I think we earthquake. I think we earthquake and we earth power into the Marowak. <laughs> they protect, but it's all right. It's all right because Groudon can only hit one thing here, and we're going to get this earthquake damage off into it, which is always useful. So it's not not terrible. I think they have to press this blades here, which will take Dalga down. Unless it misses. Unless it misses. Oh, they rock slide. They want to prioritize getting rid of the. Um, <coughs> they want to get rid of. Uh, the lander is here, which makes sense. Um, but Dialga not going to really worry too much about that. We have the opportunity there to go after the Groudon, which, you know, makes sense a lot of the time. But with Incineroar coming back onto the field, we can't fake out the uh, the Marowak. We can Snarl, I guess. Just Well, an Earth Power definitely should get the Marowak. We are Life Orbed. So we just fake out Groudon and Earth Power, I think. Just depends how bulky this Marowak is, I guess. But it'd be nice to stop the Precipice Blades this turn. Because then they have to... Oh yeah, they go for Protect. Okay. Unless the Marowak's got like Earthquake. And that would not be good. That would not be good. But I'm kind of whole... I'm kind of thinking a Life Orbed Earth Power should be enough to get the Marowak. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And now, Dialga should outspeed Groudon because it's a kind of a trick room based team. So, and like I said, we've got the Reflector. Hopefully, a Flare Blitz or an Earth Power should be enough. And like, I don't think Presbyter's Blades takes both down. It might take Dialga down, but it doesn't take Incineroar down. No, we both survive. So, well, that's alright then. So, low rolls. Uh, the Life of Recall going to take Dialga down, but the Earth Power should be enough to take the Groudon down. So, there we go. Two wins. That was, a, that was a nice game, that last one. Um, we've had two nice games with the Dialga team today. Uh, performed pretty well. So what we're going to do, good game to our opponent, is wrap up now and remind you all of Joe or Cloverbell's uh, rental code for this Dialga team. So we'll be right back. Hey right, friends, here is today's rental code. As I said, a big shout out to Joe and Cloverbell's for providing the rental. And do definitely check out their channel down in the description. Their socials and their channel will be linked down below. So if you do try the team out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Dialga is an interesting Pokemon in this format. Um, it has a lot of power, especially with that Life Orb kind of boosting its attacks and the, the Flash Cannon and the, the Max Quake, obviously from the Earth Power are two of the best Max moves that you can have outside of probably airstream in the format so uh, the team's got flexibility all over the shop with trick room nice speed control with the scary face as well and then the redirection and the fake out support as well to help things like the Alga and blastoise kind of get set up and we've seen how important the landers can be in this format as well with something like the lumberry and then that screen support from grimstall so if you do try the team out like i say i hope you have a lot of fun big shout out to joe once again thank you so much for tuning in friends and we'll be back very soon with another episode on the channel so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye